Look at you, hacker. A pathetic creature of meat and bone. Good morning. It's me, your boy, uh, Joey. And we're going to make a chess video today. I'm going to try something a little different today. I'm going to try a bit of a longer game. Um, another chess streamer, John Bartholomew, uh, often says in his videos that the best way to improve in chess is to play longer games, at least 15 minutes per side, and then to analyze the games yourself, like go over them without the computer, and try and figure out where you made mistakes, and only then look at it with the computer's help. Um, I'm going to try and do all of that. Uh, I know the temptation, my temptation personally, is to play faster games. 10-minute ten, ten game, 5 second increment is per be be just about perfect for me. Uh, uh, and I'm starting to really like the five minute games or the three second increment. It's exciting. Um, but I think a lot of what goes on is instinct based on what I already know rather than understanding new aspects of positions or situations or thinking them through on a deeper level. And so I'm going to try and do that. I'm going to still try and keep it entertaining. I'm still going to try and uh, talk talk through. Um, and actually, hopefully, at a, paradoxically, at a longer time control, maybe I'll have less periods where I stop talking entirely because my body shuts down and diverts all of my brain energy to thinking. <laughs> All right, let's do this. We'll go to Lee Chess. Let's go play, create a game, and let's put out a seek for 15 minutes with a five-second increment. That should give. We'll do rated uh, at that at that rating. Let's let's go. Yeah, let's let's do 1650 to. Let's even go all the way up to 2000 because I think we're we're rated. I think we're still rated below. 1700 uh, in the longer time controls. Uh, we're 16 something because uh, we lost a few games. But um, I want to play someone stronger than me. I think you learn. Yeah, I'm rated 1676. I want to play someone stronger than me. I think you learn more when you play someone stronger than you than you do when you just. Uh, this video. This video is going to be a little less about crushing motherfuckers and eating their blood. A little more about. You know, powering up my uh, crushing muscles, making my stomach a little bigger so that more blood fits in it. You know what I mean? I'm 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 trying to make myself better, and I'm trying to to give you the tools to make yourself better so you can crush more motherfuckers. Maybe one day you and me will play. You can crush me. You can eat my blood. Uh, that sounds great. That that sounds great. I, I don't want to live forever. I I don't trust people that I meet who say they want to live forever. I have a friend who wants to live forever. It's a total psychopath. Uh, why would you want to do that? I I there there are days I wake up and oh we got a game. What are we at? Six. We're up against the sixteen nineteen. So we're actually against someone rated a little lower than us. Uh, we're playing a 15 minute game, he's blazing out his moves. Okay, but we're not. We're gonna think. There's no reason for me not to take this pawn, I think. Uh, this is one of his two center pawns, the D and the E. Controlling the center in chess is very important. Um, the whole idea behind the English opening, which is what I play, C4, is to kind of diverge from this controlling the center with your pawns and control it from the flanks with, with a bishop on g2 um, and a, uh, a pawn here controlling d5. But, I mean, if he's going to give me one of his center pawns for one of my flank pawns, that gives him less control in the center. Um, yeah, and he's going to let me develop develop while I do it. Usually they pop their queen out. I mean, 
that gives me a tempo on the queen too. So there, there, there are a few different ways that this can go. Yeah, he can do that. I don't mind. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. There's no need for me to. When I first started playing chess, right here, I'd be like, "Oh, I'll take his knight. Knight for a knight. That's an even trade. That's good." He brings his queen out. I'm a little behind in development. Part of the edge you get as the the white side is that you're a little bit ahead in development. So I'm going to make a natural developing move here. I'm going to fianchetto my bishop, which is usually my plan. Yeah, and he's going to take my knight. So he's spent he spent four moves getting to you know, this position where he's got one piece out. He's got his pawn in the center. Um, does not have a pawn. So there's some tricks in the beginning of the English opening. I talk I talk a lot about tricky shit in um, in my videos. And one of the things in the English opening that sometimes people fall for that's tricky shit that I do is I'll, I'll hop up. I, I bring my knight out to here. I'm not going to do it right now. Because uh, if he moves his pawn here, my knight has to jump somewhere. Right now I have no, I have nothing defending this square, so I can't jump my knight here. Um, I should have done that in green. I cannot jump my knight here. However, uh, when I still have a knight on this square, and he does this push, and he has his knight on this square, this is a mistake. Pushing this pushing this pawn is a mistake because all of a sudden by there should be a button and there probably is for getting rid of all of these arrows at once. I shouldn't use I shouldn't use so many arrows. Um, I'll have to learn how to do that. Um, because then all of a sudden he's got this pawn, it's pushed forward further than any of his pieces can defend. Um, and all of a sudden I've got a knight uh I've got a knight here attacking it. I've got a knight here attacking it and this bishop is attacking it when 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 the pawn is here. Uh he can add his queen as a defender, but it's still two defenders against three and I can also add my queen as a as an attacker. And so that that pawn will will just fall. That's um it's not going to work on me. It's I mean it's not going to work for me right now, so I'm going to Try and develop naturally. Uh, I may even, because I don't have my other knight, I may even go for a setup that's like this, where I'm going to put my, yeah, my the knight that's on g1, I'm going to put it on e2, and then castle like that. I'm going to fiend out of this bishop, but there are situations in which it might be best on this square something might something might happen um and I, I mean i can't foresee what it is at this point but something might happen where this uh this bishop gets taken off and then a, a bishop here is going to keep him from castling kingside and that that's not a bad thing i'm going to fall through on my plan and i'm thinking about follow up moves it also might be best not to fianchetto that bishop at all but instead to to push my pawns in the center Either this pawn, or, or this pawn, and uh, and 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 challenge this little guy. You know, like maybe I could start controlling the center right away. Like in this situation, well, maybe I should castle. But in this situation, this move's interesting. He's got one defender, two defender, three defender, four defender. Um, or attackers of this pawn. I can defend it once, twice, three, four times. So that'd go like a pawn takes, pawn takes, pawn takes, bishop takes, knight takes, knight takes, and let me go through that again because I think these things through too quickly sometimes. If I push Pawn takes.
my pawn takes, so then I'm threatening his bishop with a defended pawn. He's just going to back his pawn up. He's not going to take with either of these pieces because they're not worth a pawn. Um, and in that case, if he backs his bishop up, say, to there, putting my dark square bishop on a3, like I mentioned earlier, might actually be a good idea. So I'm going to try that. No, he's just gonna just gonna trade the bishops off. That's okay. He's not gonna stop me from castling because I can recapture with my queen. He castles, I castle. He has a majority on the queen side, but I have uh. Uh, I, I de I'm definitely it more in control of the center, and and on the king side. I mean, I've got five pawns here to three, and he's got three to one over here. So I think I might focus on. Right now, he looks to be. He he wants to line these up, bring his bishop into here, uh, and then force the trade of the light square bishop, uh, because with this piece here. Let me let me clean that off. But with uh, with with his bishop here protected, if I take it, he takes it the queen. He gets his queen in here. Um, if I don't take it, and I have to move this this rook somewhere because his bishop can take here. Um, however, if I move my rook now, say to a square where I want it anyway. Uh, c1. He brings his bishop down and I can just, oops, I can just move my bishop back. I can just take it out of harm's way and it retains all of its control along this diagonal. This is kind of a stupid piece in that case and uh, uh, I gotta tell you I like the sound of that. So my next move is gonna be these arrows. There's, there should be a button for, and there probably is. I, I should be looking this up. I'm not. My time control here is terrible, but but I'm trying to talk through my ideas more. Um, I'm trying to talk through my ideas more. Another idea I could have had there would be to bring this knight up here, which would also control this square. Um, and he really doesn't want to attack on with his king side. I don't know what this knight's gonna do. He doesn't have. He can do some sort of repositioning, but yeah. See, uh, we'll pull back because that was our plan. No sense wasting any time on it. Um, although at some point we could use. Yeah, that's. That works. All right, okay. okay, so the reason I can't take, obviously, the reason I can't take is because there's nothing defending my queen uh, here. So I take with my pawn, I get a piece, his queen comes down uh, and gets my queen for free. That's no good. However, that piece is in danger and does not have... does not have a great square to go to. He can go here, here, here. Uh, he can't go here because I control it. Cannot go here. Uh, I should make that a red one because I control it. Um, that's kind of a useless move. I mean, he might be... His bishop interferes with his ability to try and do some checkmatey things over here with his queen. I'm thinking... Get rid of the circles again, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm thinking of putting my queen on... Uh, he only has a light square bishop, so I, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to keep my pieces on uh, dark squares too. I'm gonna put, thinking of putting my queen here, 
And so uh, doubled up, threatening to take here. Uh, he can defend with his rook, and that ad adequately defends his pawn. Um, however, he may also... Uh, I mean, I mean, if he does that, then I'm just going to chop this guy off. I'm going to win his piece. So he's not going to do that. Uh, but what he may do, what may seem clever, is for him to just hop his knight back. And obviously I'm not going to take with my queen. He takes back, I've taken a piece for a queen. But what I will do in that case, without hesitation, is take his knight for a... Uh, with my bishop. He'll have to take back with the pawn. Well, no he doesn't. He could take back with the queen. And then he's threatening checkmate. But I'm just going to take his queen with my queen. He takes with the pawn. I take with the rook. And I've still won a pawn. So that's my plan right now. He may also push. That's another option. I should have thought that through. I am down to five minutes. I need to start, I need to start moving faster. Um, but I also, I need to start... Yeah, that's he's just willing to give that up. Okay. Yeah, that's not an actual checkmate threat, though, right? I can just... I should have... You know what I should have done? Okay, wait. I haven't done it yet. So, I could block... I could block with my, uh... With my knight. Yeah, and and if he pushes his king pawn there in order to kick my knight and threaten, so that my knight has to move, I take his bishop for free, and yeah, I take his bishop for free, and uh, that covers the checkmating square that he wants. That's not great for him. Yep, that's what he did. Bishop for free, you don't get checkmate. Now I'm going to start, um, I'm a piece up, so now I'm going to start moving faster. Um, yeah, he thinks he's going to get it, but uh, at this point... At this point, I'm going to... What's the fastest way? Let's do this. Let's get, let's get rid of his queen. The queen's come off the board. This should be an easy mop-up job. I've got a check right here. That's protected. Um... Yeah, yeah, he resigned. That was, I mean, that was a good game. He wants a rematch, but that's not the point of what we're doing here today. Okay, so that's the game. It was a good game. Uh, I, I should, I'm going to tell him that. Good game. Well played. His problem was, I think, that he got over-focused on, on this checkmate idea and uh, and pushing it. But also... We're playing a 15 minute plus 5 game, and I, I'm guilty of this too. Yeah, like, if you go back and look at my 10 minute games, um, you'll see that at the end of uh, a 10 plus 5 game, sometimes I have 9 minutes left, you know, or I'll have more than 10 minutes left because I've added 5 seconds. I've been moving less than, taking less than 5 seconds per move, um, using way less time than I have. Um, Lee Chess has an analysis board. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, I am going to turn off Stockfish. Stockfish says in this final position that I'm plus 8.9, but I'm going to turn it off. Um, I'm going to turn off the best move arrow, computer analysis, and uh, let's just Let's just look through it ourselves and use our own human brains. Oh, it's got... How do I turn this off? 
Um, oh, these are move times. That's actually useful. We'll leave that on. Uh, as, as you can see, um, the difference between the, the lines that go down here is my opponent's, how much time he spent thinking on each move, and up here is how much time I spent thinking on each move, and it is it's much higher. Although a lot of time I spent um, explaining, but that's the same as thinking. There, there are a number of times where I spent more than two minutes on a move, and I think that that is uh, I think that that's important uh, to 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 recognize positions where things are going to change, and you want to make sure that you're thinking through all of the fucking ramifications of that. Okay, so, 1c4, this is the English, this is my preferred opening. Um, I started playing this, I only started learning chess, like taking chess seriously, when I was in my late 20s, early 30s. I'm 37 now, um, I... I play a lot, but I don't study a lot um, anymore. Uh, uh, but like in in my early thirties, between like thirty two and thirty five, for instance, I really tried to to study more. I studied the end game. I bought that Dvorsky's end game manual and tried to make hide or hair of that. It helped a little bit. Uh, I got to tell you that there were like some chess apps that actually helped me more and just. Getting books of Endgame studies, um, Silman's Endgame manual and Pandolfini's Endgame book both were big helps for me. Um, both, I mean, so there are different aspects of the Endgame study that helped me. This has nothing to do with this game, um, but I'm just talking about learning and improving in chess in general. And I think a lot of people put a lot of focus on the opening. Like, it deters them from wanting to play chess because, you know, you're playing against people who have memorized these openings. Um, and I play the English. Uh, but the opening, it's important because you don't want to get to a bad position when you get to the middle game. So you want to, you want to know a little bit. You want to know what you're doing. You want to know the ideas behind the opening phase of the game. But I've won more games, especially... Especially once I'm playing Blitz games, I've won more games because of my study of endgame technique, like how to checkmate someone fast. Uh, like, if you practice again and again how to checkmate, if you've got a king and a rook and he's just got a king, if you just go over and over and over again, what's the most efficient way to checkmate? If you've got 10 seconds left and, and you're in a winning position, you can do it. Like you want to get to a point in your endgame study where if you're winning, you can actually win. Because if you run out of time, that's just going to be a draw. If you've got a queen and a king, and they've just got their king, you've taken everything else from them. Uh, that's just going to be a, that's just going to be a draw. And if they still have a pawn on the board, um, that might even be a loss for you if you run out of time. So you want to know how to checkmate them. Um, that's, that's the first important thing is you want to learn the basic checkmates. You, you know, you want to learn, uh, king and queen, king and rook, uh, two rooks, uh, you know, rook, queen, um, the basic ones. They're, 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 they're like, you know, there are fancy ones. There's like the two bishops, bishop and knight, which is tricky. Um, there are certain circumstances where you can checkmate with the knight. Smothered mate is a really fancy one. Um, that shit comes up has come up in maybe one of my games each. Like, um, in situations where you've got two bishops, for instance, against your opponent, you're way way better off converting that into a win by taking the, all of their pawns and protecting one of your pawns, and then just getting your pawn up and making it a queen. Um, that is ninety percent of that the end game. Uh, at this level, at my level, which is not not very high, I'm I'm you know I uh, I I'm like on here I'm around the 1700 level. I've been as high as 1900 on Lee Chess when I was taking it more seriously. Um, I've never really played tournament games. I played a couple, like two-hour time controls, and I've done 
I did pretty well in those, but uh, I didn't do enough to get more than just a provisional rating. So um, I do like, I do really like long, long, long time controls because then you can just sit and think for for a long time. And that's, uh, as you can see here, I, I started running into some time problems. I, I had five minutes left and he was up well over, uh, well over the 10 minute mark. Um, okay, I'm sorry, I'm rambling. Uh, the opening, you should find an opening you like, one that gets to positions like, like just, just look it up. Google, Google, Reddit has some, uh, Reddit, like RHS on Reddit has some great facts and things about, you know, opening books. You want to just find an opening that leads to positions that you like. If you, if, if you enjoy tactics, if you enjoy seeing like skewers and forks and, and stuff, uh, that maybe they don't see, like, which is, also what I call tricky shit. I call a lot of things tricky shit when I'm playing these games. But if you enjoy doing stuff like that, y you want to play uh, uh, an opening that's what they refer to as very sharp or uh, or one of the open games, you know? So uh, E4, um, which which uh, is the, mo the most popular first move for white. Um, E4 and... Also, D4 are, are the most popular. D4, I think, leads to much quieter games. Um, although not always, because, I mean, the most popular opening there is the, this, what's called the Queen's Gambit, which can lead to, if it's accepted, it can lead to some very open games. And so, look around. Look for, look for people talking about openings. Look for people at your level talking about openings. Um, and... Uh, and if you like tactics, look look for look for words like sharp and open, um, and then find one of those openings that that they're talking about. And just learn. You only need to learn it like five moves in. You just need to get to the middle game, not worse. You just need to, uh, and then you just need to play it. You just need to go into a site that has a rating system like Lee Chess or Chess.com or Chess Twenty Four, um, and play that opening and you're going to lose it first because you're going to be playing against people who have been playing for a while playing against that opening for a while and they're going to know some tricks so you'll play and you'll fall for something you'll 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 see what you think is a free pawn you'll take it um and you'll fall for it you'll feel like an idiot but you're not going to fall for it again um you just keep playing keep playing the opening you'll learn it better and better and eventually uh, you'll get to, um, you'll get very comfortable in the first five moves, and then the first ten moves, and then you get into middle games where it's the chess that's what's actually important. And I think that that's, that's a good place to be uh, with that opening. Um, and that's what I've done with the English. And the reason that I selected the English, um, to be perfectly frank, is that it it's sound. I think it's it's not, it's not you know, it's, it's, it, it's the top... It's the third most popular opening, and actually, in if you followed those Alpha Zero games against Stockfish recently, Alpha Zero, the Google artificial intelligence that trained itself just by playing against itself, not by looking at any human games, actually seemed to prefer the English opening, which I found really gratifying. But it was not. That's not why I started learning it. I started learning it because it's the third most third most common. So it's. People see it way less frequently, which means, you know, I, uh, I, uh, I get stuff like this, like, this person clearly doesn't play against the English very much, because this is not, this is not, you know, they didn't do this, but, you know, this buys a tempo, um, they're not, they're not, they're not going to equalize, uh, very easily doing this, the, 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 the main line is how you should, if someone plays the English against you, play E5. That's, you want to get into the main line. Um, I also, uh, probably the most frequent one I come against when, when someone uh, sees the English and they're not very familiar with it, is the symmetrical English. Um, which is, it's a very popular opening, but it is really, it's not ambitious at all for black. He's not fighting for equality. He is just, you know... Um, 
you know, he mirrors moves for a while, and it, it doesn't lead to... I've won, I've won more games against the symmetrical English than I have probably against all uh, the... Well, definitely against the main line. Like twice as, twice as often I win against the symmetrical English as against the main line. Um, and on Lee Chess, I, I think I can look up the stats, um, but I, I started playing it because it was less common. Um... And the more I played it, the the quicker I got to, to this place where I'm playing against people who, you know, this is the first time they've seen this position, and I've seen this position a ton of times, you know? Uh, and so I feel comfortable. I don't feel out of my element. You know, he takes. I'm not, like, nervously, like, you know, does he have tricks here? Does he have follows up? I just naturally continue my development. Um... Because uh, you want to get developed quickly, and so that's what I do. I, you know, I, uh, I take back towards the center so that I give my bishop these options. Uh, I, I, I often play with a double fianchetto in the English. Um, I don't know the theory on that. I have some books on the English that I, I'm going to be honest, I haven't read entirely through. So far, this game is going perfectly normal. I think later when we look at it in Stockfish, it'll probably say that I have a slight edge here because of the, the way that they've played the opening and my slight lead in development like it'll probably say like like white starts uh computers seem to think that white starts with like plus five because of the initiative the very first move um i've got my bishop on this long diagonal it turns out to be very strong later on when he's trying to checkmate me with his bishop and queen and then when he's trying to checkmate me with his uh knight and his queen it having retained my bishop later, it gives me the option of pushing this pawn, which is uh, a move that I strongly considered. He develops to his knight to here. This is a very natural square. It's tempting, um, and when I first started playing, it's very tempting to... Uh, um, yeah, well, let's do his next move. Okay, so he does... Uh, this is good. It's occupying the center. But it's very tempting in this position, especially when you're learning chess, to take this bishop. Uh, to use your bishop to take that knight and saddle him with doubled pawns because doubled pawns are a weakness. Um, and uh, so I, I used to play that a lot. Um, when I was first learning the English, I played that a lot because you hear that. You hear, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to saddle my, my opponent with doubled pawns, give them a weakness. They're easier to attack. They're harder to defend. Um, in this position, this is a really strong in the English. This is a really strong bishop. Your light square bishop is your is your your important bishop. Your good bishop. This helps him. Um, you know he's taken back like this, but like, like what's really my plan here? I'm still gonna. I'm still probably gonna. Ca I'm, I'm still definitely gonna castle on the king side, but. Um, You know, uh, I mean, I, I could even continue developing the way that I did. But, like, he puts his bishop here. I go here. Um, you know, he starts pushing this pawn. He can even give this pawn away if he wants. I castle. You know, he gets his queen somehow to here. This is going to be a hard square to defend. I'm, I'm, this is covered right now for my knight. Um, I, have, I have serious weaknesses on the light squares. Um... I've 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 wasted this move in the opening, uh, creating a spot for my light square bishop to give it this scope, to give it this diagonal, and put it here, uh, which weakens the structure around my own king. This because I know this is where I'm putting my king, um, and then I gave it away, leaving him with his light square bishop. I didn't even trade it for his light square bishop, and so these doubled pawns are not enough. I don't think they are enough compensation for that. I don't think. Um, I think that that's something that should be avoided in in this in this opening. Um, so yeah, he plays his his uh, his pawn out, starting to control the center. We're contesting control of this. He's got much more control of it than I do, but at least I've got a pawn on it right now. Um, I add another bit of control to it while also giving my knight somewhere to go. Uh, I can't put my knight here because, because, like I said, when he pushes here, my knight 
doesn't have a good square to go to. I go here, he can, you know, push, he could just keep chasing me around. He's getting a lot of moves out, and I'm moving the same piece again and again, which is something that uh, is, it's a waste of time, it's a waste of time in that opening. And but when I say a waste of time, I don't mean, I don't mean that I'm wasting time on my clock. I mean, I'm wasting tempos. Um, and it, and tempos are important, especially in the opening, because, you know, I'm moving my knight again, and he's getting more developed. And I'm moving my knight to keep it safe, and okay, my knight eventually gets somewhere safe, but I've spent six moves getting my knight somewhere safe. He's got all of his pieces out. He's probably castled by then. Um, and then I've still got to spend moves, uh, you know, getting this bishop somewhere good, getting my queen off the back rank, uh, castling so that my rooks are connected and in all that time he has time to coordinate his pieces and develop an attack and that's that's a strong advantage so here I uh, I open up a square for my knight to come to I add to my control of one of the central pawns these what am I doing these four pawns are these four squares are very important um, controlling these having uh, means um, especially with pawns, is important because it means that eventually you can put pieces there and like uh, a knight on one of these four squares has the most control of any knight. Like, you know, um, it can get to anywhere on the board in just two jumps. And uh, You've heard the saying like a knight on the rim is dim. Like if, you, if your knight is here, he can go here, 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 and here, you know, he's got four moves he can get to. If he, if you want to bring him into an attack on the queen side, like say you want to get him here, like, you know, that's <laughs> sorry once again about uh the, the the circles, but you want to go here, here, um, you know, then you're then you're doing what? What are you doing to get there? You're you're, you're going. <laughs> this is not the most efficient way. Then you're going here, then here then here, then here, like, there might be a slightly more efficient way than that, but, like, getting across the board with a knight is not a fucking easy task. Uh, a knight on the rim is dim. If it's, if it's, if it's part of an attack, like, when he had his knight over here, um, you know, you're close to the, you're close to the side here, and it's part of his, not the greatest, not the strongest or well thought out checkmate attack, but if I hadn't seen it, you know, he had uh, he had checkmate threats here on this square. So, um, controlling the center is 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 very important. And the bishop here, part of the idea of the English is to control from from the flank. So I'm I'm adding control to the center from this pawn, but also this bishop controls controls this diagonal, which includes two of the center squares. Um. Where do we go from here? He brings his bishop out. Uh, yeah, that's that's not a bad square for for his bishop. I don't I don't plan on doing a a, a lot down here, but um, yeah, I'm not sure how great this move is. Uh, he doesn't have a knight here um, in the English. Uh, he because he he traded this knight off. Um, in the English, a knight here protects this square, which often gives them a good tempo of bringing their, their bishop to here, and if I've got a knight here creating a pin, um, or if I don't, then, then buying a tempo, they, they get their piece out, and they also have to make me move my queen before I want to move my queen. I want to get my knight, my bishop, my uh, castled. Uh, before I move my queen, right? Because the queen is a valuable piece, and I don't want to. I don't want to be having it be chased around while I'm trying, still trying to get developed. So having the knight there, uh, if you're fighting against the English uh, on this square, uh, helps you develop this piece um, with a tempo against the queen, or at least a pin, which also impedes development. And here he doesn't have that. Uh, it doesn't hurt him. It doesn't. You know, he still gets his bishop out. It just doesn't come with a tempo or a, or a pin or any additional bonus, which I think is another problem 
uh, that he's run into for for you know having traded that night off so early for like spending so many moves trading his night off for my night. I think a better move for him then would have been just to move his night here rather than than to take here. But anyway, I continue my development. I'm getting I'm ready to castle on the next move. He brings his bishop out. That's a good square for the, his dark square bishop. Um, it's 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 better than this. Uh, it's better than this. It does allow for this attack that I go in for, but his dark square bishop here is not. It's not going to be too too great. Uh, here it defends this, but you don't want to have your bishop sitting entirely just like acting like just one expensive pawn for the whole thing and it limits his queen's control down here so i think that was a good move um i mean so far uh i'm trying to i should be focused on 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 the mistakes that i've made uh, but i've played this opening so many times that at this point i'm not sure i've made uh any any big or that i can recognize mistakes um castle we're not on a... Yeah, okay. And then... I push this. Uh, I spent... Yeah, I spent a minute and a half thinking... No more, because the move before he brings his bishop out... I was considering pushing here. Was I? I don't remember what I spent that time on, so we won't talk about that. This knight also adds control to d4, uh, which gave me the idea of pushing... I spent a minute and a half thinking about the ramifications of this push, and I think it paid off. Um, his bishop didn't do what I thought it was going to do, um, but yeah, I spent a minute and a half thinking, uh, thinking his bishop would either have to come back here or go back this way, um, completely forgetting that uh, once I've taken like this, his bishop can just come here with a check. Uh, that's that's a pretty big oversight. Uh, I mean, that's a pretty big oversight. Thankfully, yeah. So his bishop comes down, puts me in check. Thankfully, I've got. Thankfully, I I had the move that I had. Um, but like, imagine if my queen. I don't. I don't want to. Yeah. I'm gonna do a couple of nonsense moves here, just 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 to demonstrate a point. If he, <coughs> pardon me, if he had so if he had had that tempo that chases my queen off earlier, and I had say I had a, uh, say I had my queen had like run out to here at this point. Um, yeah, I take. Uh, let's give him a nonsense move so this works. I take back, uh, he comes here with check, he's protected by his knight, if I take, he could take back. The knight is pinned to the king, but I, the only thing I could take with is my queen, which is the, what's pinning it, so he could take back with the knight, so I can't take his bishop. Uh, I do the same move, blocking, he does the same move, and now my king has to take back. I can't castle anymore. My rooks are connected, that's good, I've connected my rooks. Um, but I would much rather have connected my rooks by putting my king in his castle. I'm right. I'm opposed directly here from the queen. I'm in the center. Uh, he's gonna he's gonna castle on his next move. His king safety is is so much better despite having this out. Like um, this is this is I would say this would be a worse position for me. I I will have, I would have fucked up if I had ended up in this position. Um. I did not, thankfully. Uh, I ended up in this position where I can block with the bishop. Um, he chose to take, which is fine. Um, I think it's fine. I don't know what a lot of his other options are. He could come down, check, and then retreat somewhere. Like maybe he comes back. Like maybe now he comes back to here. Um, but it's kind of helped me develop then. Uh, I mean, either way, it's going to have helped me develop. I don't know if it's, this is going to be the best square for my queen, but 
you know, I'm one move away from castling now. I have my choice of which way. Obviously, I'm not going to castle on this side because I have no pawns to protect my king. Um, uh, but he's kind of he's, he's helped me get my queen off the back rank, which is important for uh, he castles, which is smart. Now my rooks are connected. My queen's off the back rank. Uh, often when you castle, your queen is still on the back rank, and your, so your rooks aren't communicating with each other. You want to get your queen out of there so that if someone takes a rook with a rook, you can take back with a rook, and you're not taking with your queen and potentially putting your queen in. Like, if you're trading two rooks off in a row, you don't want to be trading two rooks for a rook and a queen. So having your rooks communicate with each other uh, without your queen interfering is an important part of development, and he helped me to do that. I think that that... That worked out pretty well. Um, it did give him this tricky... Uh, uh, he, he moves in for it as well, uh, which is smart. Um, and he moves in for it with a threat. He moves in for it with lining these two up on this square. Because uh, I, I did mention that the... Um, my light square bishop is, is, is my strong piece in the English. Like, Fianchetto, like, this is, this is my, this is my star piece. Uh... Uh, often in in these games, um, but he's a bit too late at this point because I can move my rook. Like I said, I moved it to an open file, which is generally a pretty good idea, and it did work out here. If I had moved it, if I had moved it to behind the queen, there was I was worried about a pin here. Um, but one of the benefits of it is that this this doesn't work at all now, right? Like I could just take, he takes, and my queen is defended. So um, what I did do moved it to the open file. He did actually did, is that what he did? No, he tried to he tried to exchange bishops off first. But I had this retreat square. There's not a lot he can do about that. He can't bring his queen down to checkmate. His only real option is if he can get his queen onto like this diagonal and there's nothing else on the back rank then he can checkmate me on this square um, is still a possibility but if he did get his queen here I'm gonna put my bishop back here um, to interfere with it and I'll, 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 I would trade bishops if I had to um, so that does give him this tricky move obviously I can't take because he takes my queen um, a knight <laughs> it's not worth as much as a queen. I would not trade my queen for three knights. Um, although, points-wise, the queen is supposedly nine points. The minor pieces are supposedly three points. Um, but he also doesn't have uh, a real threat here. Um, I mean, say I move some nonsense move like this. Uh, this is a really nasty fork. Uh, he's forking my queen and my king. But, uh, again, this bishop protects that forking square, so that's not a real threat. Um, in the game, I, I decided... Oh, I spent a lot of time here. I spent... Yeah, I spent two and a half minutes thinking about, about what to do here. Um, and I did decide that attacking this pawn uh, was going to be something that would be worth giving up my dark square bishop for. Um, I looked at the line where I attack it, he brings this back to defend, and then I give up my, uh, I give up my bishop for it. Um, yeah, and... I'm, uh, if, he had, if he had started doing something kind of tricky, like this. Uh, well, at that point, I think I probably would have done this. I would have done... I would have brought my bishop back that, and he still gets his piece, but I'm protecting this checkmate square, and uh, this checkmate square is also protected. I think this is... This is, this is a pretty good position for me. After this, I'm... I'm taking some pawns, you know. He can do this. Uh, I I could start getting I could start getting greedy. I could start going, you know, buck wild <laughs> if I want. Uh, I think 
I think. I, 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 uh, but I did, I did put a lot of thought into that. He did this, and, um, I could maybe have put more thought into whether this was a threat. Because, obviously, he wants to, he wants to checkmate me here. Like, why else is he putting his knight here? Like, his knight doesn't have a lot of squares, and I think I underestimated my opponent's I think I underestimated his intentions, his or his 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 planning. I saw that this was threatened, um, and I'm like, well, he doesn't have a lot of good squares to go to. He can go there. My plan works. I I went upon, um, you know. So maybe he just wants to go to a good square, and maybe he just thought that that was a better square for his knight than this. Like this is kind of not out of play, but I mean, he's got one square he can go to in the future. So yeah, a little bit out of play. Um, yeah, so, so he makes his move here. I, uh, I, I'm not really thinking about this square at this point. This queen's way up here, um, and I go it right, right in for it. I'm happy for a queen trade. Like, if he does, if he does this, I've got a rook on the seventh rank, uh, I'm ready to double up. Neither of these pieces work together. Um, like, they do not, they are not coordinated at all. Neither is a threat. Um, this knight's going to start hopping around, coming into play. He can start coming back and repositioning himself if he wants, but like where he is now, he has no threats. He can start pushing his pawns, maybe. I don't know. This bishop's blocked in right now. Like If he tries to, tries to get rid of my rook that's on the 7th rank, I can just double up. He takes. I take. I'm still on the seventh rank. He's got no entry square right now into my uh, into my play. I can start picking pawns off with my bishop. Um, I mean, this gives him. It, uh, it doesn't even because his bishop's blocked right now. I can force the trade of rooks. Like there's, it's it it starts getting good for me if he trades queens off and I'm up the material that I'm up. I wish it showed here um, instead of having to count every time. So what I got five, uh, he's got he's got five. So I've won a pawn. One, two, three, four, five, six. I've got six. He's got five. So I'm a pawn up is basically the situation right here. Um, but if he trades queens off, um, I'm in a great position to to get on the seventh rank, win another pawn. Um, his pieces, as I said, they feel kind of out of play to me. Um, but I didn't see, I did not see his next move, which was this, uh, and that's threatening. That's like, say, say I, I go, I go pawn hunting, like that's checkmate right there. Um, I needed to find, I needed to find a defense. And I thought about this, uh, I don't know if he would have gone in for it. Maybe he would have. You know, trade queens. That messes my structure up. Um, I'd probably do it this way because I'd rather have an isolated pawn over here than have this central pawn be isolated. I'd rather have this central majority. Um, but I still feel like that would have been a good position for me. Um, but... Uh, the way that I did decide to go is this, because this bishop has no flight squares, blocked in by this, there's nothing protecting him. Um, and it felt like he was being a little hasty. He was making his moves really quick. Um, uh, I was confident that any threat by the rook, I could start bringing my uh, queen to safer squares. That's not a safe one, but like to here. Uh, not to here. If the rook comes here, there's places I can go. I think you'll notice that I'm not I'm not thinking as much here. I I went into tactics mode. I saw this. I saw that it blocked this. I saw that taking this like like in this in this thing it, he wants to checkmate me here. That's a that's a one move checkmate, right? This threatens to win material. The move that he does do. Let's do, let's just move forward here. That threatens to win material because if like say if my rook comes back here, checkmate. Right? So, 
you know it it at first glance it looks like that that uh, not rook sorry knight that knight has to stay there and then he wins it um he did not see that this wins material and protects the checkmating square at the same time um I think this is not a bad idea. Um, honestly, uh, so, so he's a piece down at this point. I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm. I'm asking for the trade of queens. Uh, if he doesn't want to go in for it, this this bishop controls this whole diagonal, so he can't go here. He can't go here. Um, uh, he can come back here. Uh, but uh, that I can force the trade of queens because this is check and it's protected. So either the if the king moves, the queen just drops. So he has to take. I take. I'm a piece up. This is definitely winning for me. Um, this knight has you know two squares, both of which kind of take him out of play. This bishop's still strong. It's pointed at this pawn next. You can't protect this pawn and stop a rook from coming up to the seventh. Once the rook's on the seventh, then you've got two attackers on this pawn. You could push it, but then this pawn drops. Um, once I'm on the seventh as well, this knight is pointed at this as well as the rook. Uh, I think that it, 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 like this is where black resigned, and I mean I think it, it, it is a mess at this point. Um, but now let's go through. <laughs> That's one thing. That's me going through. Um, and that's me going through and thinking through my moves, seeing where I made mistakes. I, uh, I think it was a mistake for me. It was a mistake. I didn't, I, I, I put a lot of thought into this move, but I didn't, I didn't see he had that check and you should always be looking to see for these like in between moves that opponents can have where they can check you because that can fuck your shit up if that queen wasn't there uh i i would have lost my ability to castle um and i just i just wasn't looking for that check dark square bishop um i should have been looking to see if he had a check in between move he gets castled um i did see that threat i did not see this coming uh this queen, uh, I was just thinking about how it connected my rooks. I wasn't thinking about how it was unprotected. And these pin tactics, this this pawn is pinned. If I had had, like this could have been, this could have been a dangerous fork. Like if I had, if I had like somehow already doubled up my uh, my rooks on uh, on this file, and I didn't see this, that could have fucked me. Like having Having a, a a fork available to him because knight moves are tricky. Having a fork available to him that I did not see is uh, I I could have been down the exchange there for just dumb blindness. Um, it's important to recognize which of your pieces are hanging, and I was not doing that. This is hanging. Um, nothing else hangs right now, uh, but I should have seen it. I did not. Uh, thankfully, I had this resource. Um, and that, this is another place where I should have been paying more attention. I uh, I thought he was just running away with his knight so that he didn't lose it. Um, I did not see that he was setting up a checkmate threat. Thankfully, didn't work out. And yeah, got to this position, which is resignable. I think resignable. You're piece down. Uh, you're losing another pawn here with check, which means I'm going to take this pawn with check, which means I'm going to pick this piece up. Yeah, like from here, this is my next move. Uh, you have, oh no, well, he could have, he could have traded queens, and that doesn't lose, that doesn't lose this, that doesn't lose this knight. So he's not losing a piece. But um, again, it's still now this is still a threat. So this this piece is actually kind of tied down now. Um, I mean, probably what I would do here is I was, oh, I might not though, because then he's got this. Well. Thankfully, I didn't have to, to think about that. But, I mean, he does have some resources. 
once he gets this 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 rook open. But also, I didn't have to trade queens. Um, I uh, I will tell you though that I am always happy to trade queens when I am up material, unless there is like some looming tactical threat or I need it for defense. If you're up material, um, like if you're up a whole piece, trading down is a good idea because even being even just being up a few pawns, if there's only a few pieces left on the board, um, a pawn is worth one point. But if there's, you know, five pawns on the board and you've got six, that's not, that's a, you know, that's a, I'm not going to do the math in my head. That's a smaller advantage than if there are three pawns on the board and he's got two and you've got three. Or he's got one and you've got two. You've got twice as many pawns as him. That's a huge advantage. Um, especially in the end game when there's n not a lot of pieces. Um, that's not where that game actually ended. Sorry, I get these like... Take, he pushed there, I came here, he went there. I didn't actually do this, did I? Yeah. This is where this is where Black resigned. So, okay, let's reset this. There must be a way. Menu. Let's enable computer computer analysis. I don't want to do the best move arrow. Um, maybe we'll come back and look at that. CPUs. Let's. Yeah, we don't. We don't. We don't. We don't need it to be fucking genius mode. Let's just have it tell us. Let's just have it tell us how if my my assessment worked out with what I thought was going on. So C4, it gives point one. I think you'll you'll notice that like if you play E4, well, it actually evaluates E4 and C4 equally. I, that surprises me. It evaluates about all of them equally as a, a, a tenth of a pawn advantage is is how Stockfish Eight uh, evaluates the. Uh, the initiative that white gets for moving first. Um, it does not like that. All of a sudden I have half a pawn advantage. If he had done the main line, um, I'm still at just 0.2 of a pawn. Um, but his move, take, still near half a pawn advantage. Taking back with the queen is a better move, I guess, because that gives me 0.7. Yeah, that, that keeps it at half a pawn. All right. Anyway, uh, po percentages of pawns is not... It's, that's fiddly computer shit. There's a lot of moves that computers make that no human would make that... Uh, I mean, there's like a philosophical question to this as well, right? Like, there are compu there's computer chess and there's chess. Like, I'm a human being. I want to play chess. I want to play moves. I want to have fun. You know, so I want to understand the underlying ideas of things. I don't. I'm not calculating thirty moves down the line and seeing that you know there's a ten percent more chance of me being a pawn up, something like that. Like a tenth of a pawn is not a real thing. There's you, there's only whole pawns in actual games. So, um, yeah. So we're still about even. I'm developing. He takes. He, it thinks that's fine, actually. I thought that maybe it would give me a bit of advantage, but I guess I'm not actually uh, ahead in development here because I, I've got one piece developed. I have spent a couple of pawn moves as well in exchange. He he moved his knight a few times to trade off for my knight, but I it did cost me pawn moves to get to where I'm developed. Um, it still does show... White having the advantage. His pawn move is good. My pawn move, it doesn't like very much. Doesn't want me to, to do that. So it's showing a slight advantage for black now. Um, but, I mean, these are all so slight that I, I, I'm not going to go into its analysis of what would be a better one. When, once we start getting into, like, you know, a pawn and a half or two pawns, then we'll start looking at things. Developed. 
Yeah, see, you can't decide. It, it's bouncing around here. Um, that move, uh, it did not like. It jumped from almost negative half a pawn to almost a full pawn up for me. Um, or pot, it jumped almost a full pawn in my direction. I wonder why. Uh, like what? Yeah, it it thinks that black's best move is just bishop d3, which keeps us about even. But that's not what black played. I play my move. It keeps my advantage. My advantage actually goes up just a tiny little bit. Take, I've got a plus, almost a full pawn advantage here, it said. Plus 1.1. So it says I'm a full pawn up, even though obviously material is actually equal. Um... Doesn't 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 like that move that keeps my pawn advantage. Trade trade. Stockfish is saying I'm like more than a full pawn advantage at this point. Although up material is equal, I think that it is counting that because he has no center pawns. Uh, I've traded off two flank pawns, uh, which would be good for attacking down, uh, and that's what I use them for later on. And, and center pawns are. So he's lost. He's lost a lot of control in the center. These these four squares, which um, I was saying were so important. All right, let's keep moving. Castle can't be bad. I castle, and my my mine actually goes down. What does it think is better than castling for me? It says castling is my best move, but then when I do it, oh, okay, just needed more time to think. All right, wants it to go rookie eight. It does not. Uh, I'm a pawn and a half up, it says. Uh, it thinks it's smarter for me to just go knight f4 right away, which does cover this square um, and does leave some flexibility for this rook. Uh, I didn't even consider this move. Um, that's a good move. Or maybe I did. And But if he, if he makes this move, that, that's super weakening. Um, like even if the computer doesn't doesn't think like you don't want to be moving the pawns in front of your king out too far for no reason, especially with so many pieces on the board. Uh, I didn't think of that move. I should. Uh, it controls this square uh, because I face this. I face this um, queen bishop battery, trying to exchange off my good thing uh, quite quite often. And my response is, if I have time, is usually. Um, to, to move my rook out of there uh, so that it's not an actual threat and I can take my bishop back to here. But uh, this is a good this is a good alternative resource um, that just didn't occur to me. Uh, and in future games, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to keep keep that in mind because I mean, obviously, yeah, if he goes bishop here now, that's that just drops the piece, right? He can't take back with his queen. Uh, yeah, um, okay. I didn't see that. Uh, what I did do was bring my rook up. It thinks that move's fine. Uh, there. It thinks my move hiding the bishop is fine. Um, wow, it really doesn't like... I, I'm, it says I'm two and a half pawns up right now. Um... Why? What does it want me to do? Rook c5. This. Okay. And where does he go? Knight c6. It just wants him to jump right back. Why is that two and a half pawns up, though? I mean... <laughs> then... Then knight f4. He's threatened. Oh, he's got no way to save the pawns. Yeah, move the bishop at this. I don't know that I understand this. Okay. Um, it seems the advantage persists even though I don't make that rook move that I don't understand. So we're going to continue on with the analysis. Maybe I'll come back and look at it later, but I don't want to waste your time by me trying to figure it out on camera. Um, that night move, the computer really doesn't like it. It says that gives me that gives me a several pawn advantage. 
and I think it's because it allows me to build a threat against against this pawn right here. Um, although it doesn't like my queen move quite as much. I lose almost a pawn in the advantage. Um, I wonder if there's a better queen move. Uh, he moves his rook in, or his rook, his knight down to here. That brings the advantage right back. Uh, bishop takes b7 is what it wants me to do. It wants me just to be greedy and like go pawn hunting. Yeah, and then rook a to b8. Uh, and then bishop to c6. Scare the queen off. I mean... That's a weird line. Doesn't want him to come back here. Plus four, it says. Yeah, knight f4. Knight, well, obviously knight f4 still works here, and I've already won a pawn. Yeah, maybe I'm not greedy enough about my pawns. I didn't want to. I didn't want to risk taking this pawn. Um, although I didn't. I'll be honest. I didn't think about it too much. He moves here. I take that pawn for sure. I'm happy to trade queens. Um, and now it wants him to come back, knight f6, so at least if there's a trade of queens, it's on his terms. This bishop's opened up again, this knight can take back, or the bishop can take back. Um, again, again, the computer wants me to steal this pawn. Um, I take, what he actually does is come down here for this mate threat. It's saying that I have a, like a four pawn advantage, when you'll notice that I'm actually only up one pawn. Uh, well, one, two, three, four, five, six, yeah, one, two, three, four, five. I'm only up one pawn, and it's giving me a four and a half pawn advantage. So, um, it must see that he's going to lose this piece here. Yeah, four, four point three with the the knight defense. Um, what does it say if I had brought my queen down? Yeah, that was a, that was a substantially inferior move, bringing my queen back down. That goes down to two and a half pawn advantage. That's actually probably just counting the pawns and my ability to get to the seventh rank with the rook. Um so I'm gl I'm I'm glad I found this 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 knight this knight f4 resource. Um yeah. It ha it hates that move. I'm plus seven now, so take the piece just drops. He um he doesn't have any good reveals with his rook. What does it want? Knight f six um, but then, it's, it's, this knight is hanging, is hanging, so the queen can just take this knight on the next move, and it still just wants me to take this fucking rook, <laughs> or not, not fucking rook, fucking pawn, it still wants me to take that pawn, because then, uh, he goes here, he can't actually take, and then it wants me to go bishop back here to protect the knight. It was, it's, it's so pawn greedy. Computer's so pawn greedy. Um, but I take... Uh, he pushes that back down, which the computer thinks is stupid. It just weakens the queen. It doesn't have any actual threat. Like, it, even, if, even, even if I give him like a, a nothing move, his threat is like, what? To push there. One more nothing move. He pushes. I recapture with... Um, Yeah, with with a pawn, maybe even just this middle pawn. You know what? Yeah, I would I would definitely I would do this, like that. Maybe that drops. I I'm still seven seven pawn advantage. Like, so at the point where he resigns, nine, uh, it matches up pretty well with the analysis. Um, that was a good game though. That was fun. They found some resources that I did not I did not see. Uh, and and put the challenge to me. Uh, I I really got to, I have to get better at time management. Um, I had five minutes left against their their ten, and if they had been playing just a little sharper uh, and and moving that fast, like I I I would have gotten into some time control pretty quick. Five second increment is not a a super super strong like super long increment. Um, uh, although I do tend to move faster in the end game because a lot of that is stuff that's like practice over and over and over again. So um, anyway, thank you for watching the video. Um, I hope that you enjoyed it or found it informative, and I hope that you enjoy your day.